my next question is is a little I'm a little shy in asking it because when when you when a, when a, a, a man asks uh, a successful woman who is a good leader in her field and uh, successful and and exemplary. Uh, and then the question is, yeah, so what difference does it make being a woman? But I think it is a valid question in a way because I think the world is still pretty patriarchal uh, and women have to struggle for equality more than men do. And, uh, and architecture itself is, is a pretty male dominated profession, if, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. So um, without sort of uh, uh, singularizing it too much, but what what, uh, what difference ha do you think has it made for you as a woman in your in your profession in the way you've the way you've succeeded or in the way you're serving the way you're you're you're, you're leading um, because you seem to, although it's a, it's a very burdensome and uh, difficult job, especially at the moment, you, you give the impression, and I think it's a sincere one, of, uh, of handling it with grace and um, without, without too many complexities. Anyway, uh, I'll, I'll let you do the, uh, answer the question if you want to, but... Um, what, no, what, what, yeah. difference, what difference does it has it made to you being a woman in this profession at this time and 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 in the kind of leadership role you you've been successful at this this woman question is very interesting because when I became a CEO uh, there were newspaper articles I mean a lot of the news media wanted to talk to me not so much about how uh, what the office is going to be like, or how I'm going to transform the office. It was about what does it feel like to be the only female CEO in the top five architecture firm. And then when I win an award, it'll be what is it like to you know be the only the first woman to win an award. You know that sort of thing. So it's very interesting that being a woman uh, in this profession draws more attention than than uh, than than other issues and sometimes I feel sorry for the men <laughs> because uh, you know they, they don't get that attention um, but really but really thank you for saying that I seem to handle with a lot of grace um, and, 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 and ease and I think it has really to do with the wonderful support that I, I get from everyone you know the family which you have met uh, and people in the office are wonderful to work with. I basically grew up with the office. You know, I've been there for 30 years. So everyone knows me and everyone is very supportive. But maybe let's, let me, yeah. Um, so, so, you know, it, it has, it has uh, not been too difficult. And um, I have never also really seen myself as a woman in a male-dominated profession. I've just always just tried to do my job. You know, and I've all, often, I mentor a lot of, of women. I, lo I mentor a lot of women architects uh, who, who seem to think that I have the answer to, to how, you know, it can be easier. Uh, and my answer is, you know, just work hard and know, know your work well. And being a male, uh, being a female uh, in a, a male uh, industry has never ever once crossed my mind and I've never ever thought of it in that way so yeah so and, that, I, and I told them not to yeah that, <laughs> that must be the secret <laughs> not to think about it <laughs> not and to I, think it, about it. oh you know not to yeah not to think about it not to make a big deal out of not it to make you know? a big deal and, and not and not to expect any any not to expect yourself to be treated any differently, I think. Yeah. I, I, I also say that we are operating in Singapore, you know, and you've been there, is, is, uh, um, you, is um, where everyone is even given an equal chance. It's a, a meritocratic uh, society. I'm not, you know, working in 
having said that, I was in Dubai before, and that was um, I, I worked in Dubai, and I have uh, worked in Dubai for you know four or five years, and we built the largest uh, mall in the world in Dubai. And I must say that at that time, I was concerned as to whether being a female in that environment would have been difficult. But it has proven not to be the case as well. And I think it all boils down to knowing your work well and uh, to, to deal with people openly, you know, with humility, uh, compassion and empathy. And, you know, everyone will see the goodness in each other. And as long as you do your work well, no one can... Uh, can find any fault in you. Mm. Thank you. I think maybe the secret is, as in everything, and one of the fruits of meditation, perhaps, is that you you don't spend too much time thinking about how other people see you or think about you or react to you. You you do the best you can, and you you do it in another centered way. So. You don't. You're not constantly evaluating yourself in other people's eyes, and that that creates a different, mm. uh, a different relationship and uh, ease with people. So thank you. Well, but let, let me just push that, just one one more uh, one step further. Um, yeah. There has there have been some comments uh, about the fact that those countries in the world which had been, where the head of government had, had been women, had dealt with the corona crisis more effectively. And um, one explanation for that wasn't the fact just that they were women, but they were also elected women. That these, were, these were women who, whose societies were sufficiently broad-minded and, uh, and intelligent, as it were, to, to say that if, if this candidate who seems to be the best qualified for the job of, of head of government is a, is a woman, fine, let's elect her. So in other words, maybe it was easier for them in a way as women to, 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 to use those particular gifts of their, of, their, um, of their womanliness. But do you think there would be, as we move into a very uncertain future with the possibility of some very serious financial crisis, but maybe also some really serious political turmoil. Do you think there is a particular quality or gift that could be con contributed to the resolution of this future crisis if there, if there were more women in leadership or more countries that would elect women or appoint women as leaders? Do we need more women, in other words? <laughs> it's a trick question here. I'm supposed to say yes. <laughs> Publicly, I'm supposed to say yes. I'm supposed well, to support all women leaders. Um, well, I think, I, I, I think they do. It's not, it's not just being politically correct. I mean, I, 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 really, I, I really do think it's, things work better when you have a, a better gender balance. Yeah, I, I, I think, uh, I often joke that, you know, we are, we will take over the world one day. Um, yeah, I, I, gender balance in any board or in any uh, country, I think we have, uh, you know, men and women and diversity. It's not just men and women, it's not just gender. For me, um, I, I'm not solely for affirmative action you know, for gender balance. I just, it's diversity, you know, and you see it's, it's people of uh, uh, different colors, people of different race, um, the good that would uh, improve the quality of any board. Um, back to being a, a woman leader, um, I think we just handle things differently. And um, ultimately the leader, whoever it is, uh, gotta be, gotta have, you know, gotta be intelligent, got to have empathy and uh, but to have all the qualities that I talked about earlier, um, humility, listening to the, the people, and not to have the power and ego to think that they're all right, that they're always right. And I don't know whether it exists more in a woman than a man, but, um, you know, but it, 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 it really depends on the, on the individual. And uh, although I'm a woman and I, I, I 
I do know uh, the qualities that we bring uh, to different meetings and different board meetings. And I do see that our ideas and our thoughts are quite different at times. But ultimately, when it comes to leadership, you know, uh, the leader has to have all that qualities that I spoke about earlier. Mm. And you know, you can see that this present COVID-19 crisis, um, you can see leaders, all types of leaders from the various different countries and how they are dealing with the, the, the crisis. And, um, um, you know, and the social isolation has shown us that you know, the, the value of human connection, of belonging to a community. Um, and, you know, I think that nowadays that in, in what we've gone through and that in making do with less, I think we can also realize that we can live on less and that we have, and a lot of us have filled our lives with uh, superfluities. And, and, and a lot of us are realizing that our health is far more important than our wealth. Mm. But I'm, I'm digressing, sorry. <laughs> no, thank you. No, just, a, just a, a story that might amuse you. I was staying with some Americans, Benedictine sisters once, who were very much, very feminist. And um, uh, one of them was telling me that they were very friendly with a, an Episcopalian Anglican sort of parish church nearby uh, that has yeah. a woman priest and a, a woman assistant priest. And they had a, fr a friend of theirs, a single mother, who took their, her son every Sunday to this church. And so every Sunday, this little boy saw either, a, a, we saw a, a woman priest um, celebrating the, the Eucharist. And after some time, the boy, young boy said to his mother, he said, you know, I wish men could become priests because I think I might like to. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, last, last question that um, I think uh, you, without putting you into the position of, a, of a, a prophet or a fortune teller, but maybe a prophet rather than a fortune teller. Um, prophets, I think, can, can see into the presence and it's not about being fortune tellers. But, uh, but you're in a good position, I think, because of the responsibilities you carry and the part of the world you're living in and the international perspective that you have and your own uh, spiritual centeredness. Anyway, a question about how you think the future might unfold and how this present crisis that we are going through at so many different levels, how this crisis might lead us or take us to choices personal choices about uh, the way we live. For example, as you were saying, learning to be content with less material possessions and less waste, less um, extravagance. Um, to be more simple, perhaps in our personal lives, but also the kind of collective decisions that we, we will be faced with soci socially, politically, and um, internationally. So, what? Is it, how do you? How do you feel we might find ourselves facing the decisions that are around the corner, coming up on us quite quickly? And what are these? What are these choices? Do you think we may have to make? I think this recent public health crisis has given the world pause to reflect. Uh, it shows us that you know, no matter who we are, whether we are rich or poor, uh, famous or obscure, uh, Asian or European, Christian or Muslim, uh, we are all we are all susceptible. And I think this crisis has taught us that how one person's careless act can have a ripple effect on the entire community and that we all have a social responsibility. 
And it has also taught us that we must all cooperate and work together if we want to make a real difference. And that to bring about collective change, we all need to be strong um, and have sound leadership to shepherd everyone in that same direction. You know, we're, we're talking about leadership, and I think um, you know that's important. And you know, it was very sad that when we read about doctors having to make the terrible decisions about who to live and uh, who not, and who to use the ventilators. And who, who, who can't. And these are not only medical, but also moral decisions. Um, it made me think about our own value system and the value system of the society as a whole. And I think the, the crisis has taught us many big lessons in human values. Um, and these awareness, I hope, will lead to change. Um, of course, I wouldn't wish the illness on, on anyone nor the fears or anxieties, uh, nor the financial hardship as a result of this health crisis. But I feel that humanity needed this lesson. Humanity needed to pause you know, and, and to understand that this lesson. And the longer the crisis lasts, I think the deeper the lesson will take root in individuals, in communities, and in policymakers, hopefully, to transform human society for the better. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Angeline, uh, we've, we've, we've made your 12-hour day into a 13-hour day. <laughs> but it's, but I it's, going, <laughs> it's going to benefit, it's going to benefit many, many, all the people who listen to this. So thank you.